Hey guys, what's up? It's Engineering, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a complete subwoofer system with an amplifier and a wiring kit in your car. So we're going to be doing this on my 2004 Nissan Altima. So as you can see, we've got plenty of trunk space to fit this 12-inch subwoofer box. It has two 12 Kenwoods, and we're going to be installing this Quantum Audio Amp. This is a nice 2,500-watt amp. So let's go ahead and see what's in here. And as you can see, there's the amplifier. Now, I already took it out of the wrappings. This came with wrapping around it. Now, if we look under it, there's a base knob as well included. So right there, that's the base knob. And that's the wiring. Now, I paid $192 for this. It wasn't that bad. It's a nice monoblock mono amplifier. And this is the wiring kit we're going to be using. It's an 8-gauge wiring kit. It's a blue wire. It's got the RCAs, the negative, the positive, the fuse, all that. And then we're gonna be using these speaker wires here. This is some speaker wires I had just laying around. This is for the, this is where you connect the subwoofer, as you can see there. We're gonna connect that there directly to the amp. And we're gonna show you how to wire this whole thing up so that it works properly. You don't get no shortage or anything. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna be starting from front to back. So we're first, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start by disconnecting the battery. So since the cables just come off like that, we can disconnect the battery just like that so now that the battery is disconnected we're gonna go inside the car and then this is the radio we're gonna be using so this is a this is pretty much just a Bluetooth radio from Walmart I already showed you how to install it we're not gonna be doing that but we're gonna be taking it out so that way we get easier access to the wires so when we start wiring everything up we can get just plug the wires in and connect them so let's go ahead and take this off so quickly, let me recap you on how to take it off. So just get your hand under here, take this piece off, and it just comes off, you can set it aside. There's gonna be a screw down there. No, first you gotta take this off actually before you get to any screws. Take it off, just set it aside. And remember, the pl plastic is brittle, so I still have the tape on there. I'm, I'm gonna get a, no a new entire thing eventually, but now we can get access to the four screws, which is there, there, right there and there should be one up there but looks like it's missing so what we're going to do now is we're going to take out all three of those screws so i'm going to go ahead and take those screws out now that all four screws are loose we can go ahead and take this entire thing out but real quickly obviously it's not going to be the same for all cars so you're going to have to work on that yourself by taking out the entire deck it's going to be differently from makes and models but just take out the deck unplug the radio so that you can get easier access to wire up the wires from the battery to the well from the rca cables and then the remote turn on that's the only two you're going to need to plug in back here so it's going to be different from any vehicles from maker model or anything but just take out the deck and it'll make it a lot easier all right now that the radio is out it's unplugged it's going to make it a lot more easier to run the wires from back here down to the side of the car and back to the trunk so this is going to make it a lot easier so now let's go ahead and get the wires out and start wiring it up so this is the wiring kit we're working with. It's an H8 gauge blue wire amp kit. It works for 500 watt amps. Well, 500 and more amps. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed and see what we got. So I already opened it up. As you can see, there's already wires. This is the remote turn on. This is going to be the RCA cables. So as you can see, it's a very long RCA cables. I believe it's 16 inches. You have the 16 inch RCA cables. So we're going to set these aside. And now when we take a look inside here, we're going to have the power wires. This is the power wire, so you can connect it directly to the battery. And you're going to put a fuse in between here. And then you're going to cut the power wire, put a fuse in between, and then just reconnect it. So that way, in case if something goes wrong, the fuse blows and not the entire battery or anything. Now we're going to have a ground wire. This is the ground wire. You're just going to find a solid bare piece of metal to ground it to on the chassis of the car. And that's pretty much all we need. So let's go ahead and get this wired up. So people usually mount their amps directly to the subwoofer box. So instead of doing that, as you can see here, we got the amp. I wanted to be a little creative and mount the amp back here just like that. Somewhere around there. So that way I can, it has a little bit more ventilation and so it doesn't get too hot in the trunk. So we're going to find a spot and mount it back here. So that's a lot better. And so that it doesn't overheat back there. So let's go find a spot and mount it. So as you can see, the amp is perfectly placed. We haven't tightened it down or anything. It's just like that. I just want to show you what, where I want to mount it. So this is the back seat. And if we take a look here, it looks nice right there. We'll just run some wires, 
back here through the seat run some wires back there and into the trunk so that way the amp doesn't overheat and we can also control it a lot easier here with the we can control the settings back here a lot easier and then we can just run wires through here up here back there and connect it and that's going to be looking nice so first things first we're going to start with the power wire so as you can see here we got the power wire and the fuse so we're going to be using the fuse and the power wire now real quickly i'm going to show you how to connect the fuse to the power wire so that way it's a little bit more installed properly and that way the fuse is installed and it doesn't short out so i'm going to show you how to install the fuse now so real quickly we're just going to take the wire out of the little these little twist ties things all right now that the wire is taken off we're gonna leave about two inches well not two inches around six inches of the wire just like this or around here we're gonna cut off right here directly where my this right here we're gonna cut it off right there cut it off it's a little bit hard because it's thick wire so you might have to maneuver it there we go we got the wire cut so this is the amount of wire we need so now we can go ahead and strip it all right we got the wire stripped now as you can see a little bit of the a little bit of the wire strands came off it's not that big of a deal as long as there's enough here so you can see it's pretty thick still so now we're going to get the fuse and we're going to take off the end cap of the fuse we're gonna take off now as you can see here this is a little screw it's, it's a I don't know what kind of type bit that is but what we do is we're gonna connect the wire here we're gonna push it in there and then just tighten this one down so it presses down on the wire and so that this is nice and tight and we can connect it to the other side of the wire too so it's gonna look something like this that's how it's gonna look like so let's go ahead and get all this done all right so after you got all this wired up as you can see here we got the fuse in place we also got the little end i also put a little this is like a little connector so that it connects to the battery and we're gonna connect this one right here and it's gonna look like this but we're not gonna do that yet because we're gonna need to run this through the firewall of the vehicle now most people run this through the fender of the car and that's not safe because if this catches on fire this is a thick wire and your car is gonna go on fire instantly so we're gonna run this through the fender of not the fender we're gonna run it through the firewall of the car so we're gonna find a spot from the firewall if we can't find one, we'll just drill a hole and then we'll connect this after we ran it through the firewall. So this is what it's going to look like, just like that. So let's go ahead and look for a place at the firewall and get it run through. So this is the firewall of the vehicle. As you can see, all this behind here, right behind the pedals, that's the firewall. So if we're looking here, you can see there's a hole there and there should be a little cover, which means someone's already previously drilled a hole here and did not cover it up so i'm surprised it hasn't rusted so that's the only place i'm looking at right now and it looks like it's meant to be drilled because there was a little piece back there that covered that up so let's look at the front of the vehicle and see what we can see if we see a little hole back here then that means it was meant to be drilled so it looks like it was around there somewhere and perfect you can see that little hole right there that's where we're going to run the wire through directly to the battery So as you can see, that's the hole right there. So we're just gonna run the wire through the hole from the firewall back into the engine bay. So we're just gonna push the wire in, just like that. Push it in enough so we can go from the firewall to the engine bay. Now we'll go to the engine bay and then we'll pull it back out. So the wire is gonna be over here, as you can see. We'll grab on the wire. And then just pull on it we'll need a certain amount of length so i'd say this is good enough since the battery is right there so we're just going to fish a little bit more back in there then we'll just we'll properly tie the wires down connect it to the battery from the positive side so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the grounding but before we do the ground wire we're going to want to properly hide the wire so it's not all looked weird and messed up here so we're going to take this piece off don't do it as hard as i did i just did it hard We'll take the little panel pieces off and then we'll grab the other end of the wire. 
we'll run it through some of the wires here and tuck it back in here just like this and now that the wire is out we can pull it out completely and that's just gonna hide the wire just a little bit and then we'll run it through the side of the car completely all the way back so i'm gonna go ahead and do all that and then i'm gonna show you how to do the ground wire so now that the power wire has been routed all the way through the car through the sides all the way up here and back up here to the amplifier so that's what it's gonna look like it's all the way tucked in nice and good so that way it's not shown so now we just need to get the ground wire so this is the ground wire right here and there's a nice solid ground right here we just got to sand off a little bit of this black paint from this little bracket here so that way we get nice solid ground but we're gonna ground this right there we're obviously gonna have to drill this a little bit since it's not it's literally really small or we can just take that end cap off and put a different one on but we're gonna ground it right there and this is a lot more easier ground and it's short also so that way the amplifier cable ground can just go right there and connect directly to the amp so that's where we're gonna ground it at now keep in mind if you were doing it if you were putting your amplifier in the trunk you're gonna want to find a nice bare solid metal to ground it can't be painted like this it has to be nice and solid so as you can see here there's a lot of grounding spots we can use but we're gonna have to if you if we were if we were to put the amplifier back here we would have to sand down obviously a little bit of that paint so we get a nice solid ground so pretty much what i'm trying to say is you're gonna have to find a bare piece of metal to ground it to so that way the amplifier works properly all right so i got the little wire here all drilled up i made the hole even bigger so the hole is now bigger so i believe it will fit here now so we just got to get this bolt unmounted so we're going to use a 13 millimeter socket place it on there we'll break it loose and then just take it off and then we'll put the wire in the bolt put it back on well first we're going to have to sand this but that's what we're going to do so i took off both bolts so then now that this is very loose and if you take a look in there it's very bare metal in there so we can just shove the wire inside there from the grounding spot we'll just shove this inside there so i'm going to do it with two hands but we'll just shove that in there into the ground and then just bolt it in since that's bare metal so that's perfect for grounding and this is going to give us a lot more easier access to connect it directly to the amplifier all right so now that the wire is in place it's all the way in there as you can see the wire is directly there we'll just grab a bolt slide it in and then we'll just tighten it down completely and tighten it down tight enough so that way the grounding is nice and solid we'll get the other bolt here tighten this one down a little bit more and we'll just put the seat back on but first we're going to get the amplifier all mounted up because you can see it's still loose we got to get it all screwed in so that it doesn't move it anywhere so we're going to go ahead and tighten down these two bolts first and then we'll go ahead and mount the amp completely all right so the amplifier has officially been mounted up as you can see it's screwed down it's not screwed down the best way but at least it's in there and this thing is not going anywhere which is perfect and now that we got the ground wire in place as you can see we got it in there we also got the ground wire here so this will just connect right there and then the positive will just connect right over there too now that that's done we just need to get the remote wire and the rca cables so we're going to run that through the right side of the car so we ran the positive wire through the left side of the car we're going to run the other wires through the right side of the car which comes through all the way up there and then into the amplifier the rcas are going to go right there then the remote wire we'll just run it through there connect it right there so that's what we're going to do so we're going to look at what we're going to take a look at what we have here so we got the remote wire this is the positive battery if you still have to connect that but we'll do that last but this is the rca cables as you can see this is the rcas and this thin blue wire is the remote wire so we're going to run this one first as well as the rca since we're going to be doing we're going to be doing these on the same side so let's go ahead and get these run so we'll start by doing the thin wire which is the remote wire so we're, we already took off we already took off some of the piece here from the the trim piece here so we're going to run the wire through down here all the way around here behind the seat and it's going to come back here all the way into the amplifier so we're going to go ahead and start by putting some wire right there so that way we know how much we're going to need to run all the way through the back and into the deck of the car so let's go ahead and get the wires in all right so we got the remote wire all nice and tucked in under the amp under this back trim piece for the back seats all the way into the back seats underneath the wire stripping and now we just got to do the rca so as you can see the blue wire is all the way tucked in nice and good we just got to get it tucked in 
from behind this, which is the seat belt cover. Then we can go ahead and do the blue wires for the RCAs. All right, so the RCA is now tucked in as well. The RCA is right behind the seat underneath the weather stripping and comes back there right into the amplifier. And now we just gotta get this little seat belt cover off and then we'll take off the trim piece from the front door. Wow. And I am not surprised because the same thing happened right here the other day, the same exact thing happened right here on this one. Like, I am not surprised this was gonna happen anyways, but at least we can still open it. We just gotta get our hands underneath and we can still open it. But anyways, as I was saying, we just gotta get this, this piece right here off. Take that off. And a little bit of the little clip came off, but that doesn't matter because we're gonna take that back on. We'll take this off carefully. And then we can run the wires down here all the way up underneath and into the rear of the radio so let's go ahead and do all that real quickly i just want to say this would be a good time to wire in your base remote wires so this is the wires we're going to be using to connect the base knob and we're just going to take it out of this little wire things but pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to wire this through right there as you can see it says remote we're going to wire that there run it through this side of the car as well and we'll just put it right there somewhere where we can get and then we can turn the base up and down all right so the wires have been ran through now you can see they're all nice and hidden well they're not hidden the best way but you can't see them from right here but we have them all wired up it's all the way ran through the back of the radio we just got to connect this to the back of the radio which connects to these rca outputs and the blue wire which i was talking about this is the remote turn on so what we're going to do is we're gonna look for the blue wire on the radio harness. So this is the radio harness that has, that came with the radio. So you can see there's a blue wire right here. Now this is connected to the, to the stereo connector, but since the stereo connector doesn't have anything to do with the blue wire, we'll just disconnect that there. And what we'll do is we're gonna tap this in together. So this is just gonna go like that. It's just gonna connect like that. We'll put a tap in there, connect them so that they're nice and solid. And then we'll connect the base knob too, which is going to come down there. And we'll just screw in the base knob right here. I already made some holes for the base knob and we'll just screw it in. And that's just pretty much how we're going to do it. So let's go ahead and finish this job up. All right, so let's tap the wires in. This is very simple. So we got both of the wires here. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using one of these red little connectors, which will join the wires together. So we're just going to slide one end of the wire inside the connector. Make sure it's all the way in there, nice and snug. We'll do the same thing for the remote turn on wire that comes from the harness. Make sure they're nice and tight. Now you can see that's what it looks like. So now we'll just grab some pliers and we're just going to squeeze the squeeze the red part of the ends so that way they're both connected and joined together. So we'll start with this one since this one's a lot easier. We'll start with this one. Whoops. Okay. We'll start with this one right here. Make sure that's in there and good. There, it's connected now. Now we just gotta do this one from this side. So make sure we get that in there. It's all nice and tight. Now we just gotta do the same thing. And good. This is nice and tight. It's not coming off. As you can see I'm pulling on it it's not coming off and that's pretty much how you tap in the remote wire so now we're gonna be working on the base knob so we got the base knob right here this is what we're gonna be using to control the base from the amplifier and we're gonna be using this piece this is from the AC controls so I already put marked two holes right here this these two holes I marked them because I used to have another base knob on this but I marked these holes right here so this will just go on like that so we just got to drill out these holes in order to get this screwed in. So let's go ahead and get these drilled out. And it seems that my drill is going to die. So, all right, that's one hole out. Now we just gotta do the other one. It's a little hard to get this hole. good now this should just go on like this and then we can screw it on so let's grab some screws 
We're going to be using these small screws. Hopefully they fit and they're not going to fit. Well, we'll try using these screws. All right, let's get the screwdriver and screw it in. So far, so good. No problems at all with the sound system wiring. And this is my first time doing it, so. Let's see, another screw, we'll use this one. This is just a tap screw. Actually, you know what? We'll use the same screw from the, for the other side. And there we go, the base knob is on. So we can control the base through this right here. So now we can go ahead and get this in the car. So now that everything is wired up back here, we can go ahead and get the radio back in. So this is the radio we're gonna put back in. So first, we're going to start by connecting the RCA cables. So I'll see if I can do it one-handed. So these are the RCA cables. All right, I probably won't be able to do it one-handed, but basically we're just going to connect the blue one to the red one and then the white one to the white one. And that's going to that's how you do it. And then you just connect the connector and you're pretty much done and i'll show you how to install this piece and everything back in wire up the wire up the amplifier connect the battery and we'll test it all out and we should be good to go So the radio is back on, it's mounted up, it's all screwed in, the whole plastic piece is back on. So now we're going to install this last piece, which is the base knob and the controls for the AC. So we just got to connect the connector from there, inside there, and the base knob, the base knob wire will just connect right inside there. And we can just get this back in, pop it in, and we're good to go. And perfect, we're done here. So as you can see, the base knob is now in place, it's nice and secure, it's not moving all wired up, RCAs, the base knob, the remote's wired, everything's back in place. Now let's go ahead and move back there and wire up the amplifier. So moving on back here, we got the amplifier, we got all the wires ran through so we can go ahead and connect them. So this is the remote turn on wire. This one is the ground wire. And of course the blue wire is the positive. So on the, on the amplifier, depending which amplifier you have, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be, a, there's gonna be like a little, it tells you it tells you where the wires go so the 12 volt is this one so that's going to go to the 12 volt the remote wire which is rem that's going to go to this one the blue one the, the thin one not the big one and then the ground the gr gnd that's ground so that's just going to be the black wire just connect those inside there now i recommend you using these little connectors for amplifier but i don't have those but we're just going to connect them to bare wire but we got to make sure we got a solid connection in there and we should be good so this one is gonna go here, like I said. So let's go ahead and flatten out the wire so that it goes in evenly. Squeeze on the wires tight so that it flattens out. Then we'll just go ahead and connect it. Make sure all of the wires in there and they're not touching other parts of the amplifier. So it's just like that. The wire is completely in there. Now we'll just tighten down the screw. Make sure it's tightened down good. Now this is not going anywhere. Well, I'll take that back. It's not, it was not tightened down good. But make sure you tighten them down real good because these wires are very thick and if they touch each other, that will cause a short, which could cause your amplifier to blow or hopefully your fuse just blows and not the entire amplifier. All right, good. Now we just gotta do the remote one. 
which is the thin one which goes in the middle all right it's in there you just screw it down now all right that's tight now the last wire which is the 12 volt wire we'll flatten it out so that it goes in So we might end up having to cut off a little bit of the wires because this is very thick and it's, it's kind of hard to get inside. But we're just going to keep flattening it out and hopefully that helps. You see what I mean? This wire is very thick. This is 4 gauge wire I think or 8 gauge. I don't remember. I think it's 8 gauge wire but... Alright so this is not going to fit clearly but we're just going to cut out a little bit of the wire and we'll just put it in there all right the amplifier is all wired up last thing to do is get the rcas in so if we take a look back here the cc line output it has the left and right channel the left and le right channel for the line input so i believe we have to connect it to the output or input i don't remember which one directly it was well i don't know at all because it's my first time but i'm just gonna assume it's the input so the top one is gonna go up there and the bottom one is going to go in the bottom just like that now these caps these were these came off the amplifier so say these caps just in case but here we have the gain the subsonic LF, lpf the bass boost and the phase shift so we have different settings here we can adjust later once the amplifier is up and running and now we just got to connect the speaker wires connect the sub connect the battery and we are done so let's go ahead and connect the subs Alrighty, so speaker wires are intact. They are connected to the amplifier. And this is pretty much what it is. You just connect the positive to positive and negative to negative. But pretty much I did is I got some old wire here. This is this is eight gauge wire. I connected it to the speakers. As you can see, it's bridged. So that's pretty much what you do. You bridge the speakers. What pretty much it means is that you connect both of the positives from the speakers and both of the negatives from the speakers. Then you take one wire, connect that positive to the positive into the amplifier take another wire connect the negative to the amplifier from the speakers and that's pretty much how you do it in bridged so that's how you install an amplifier so now we guys got to connect the battery with the fuse and we we'll test it out and see how good it sounds now the last thing to do is to remove this nut connect the wires from the amplifier make sure it's in there we put put the nut back on Make sure we get this tight. All right. And we just adjust the wires a bit. Now that it's tight, we just gotta tighten it down with the ratchet. up and good the amplifier wires is now connected now we can go ahead and connect the battery so what you gotta do is quickly put the battery on like this positive to positive and negative to negative no sparks that's a good sign and now let's go ahead and test this out and see if it worked or if it was just a complete waste of time Alright, moment of truth, key in the ignition, flip it to accessory only. Accessory is on, let's turn the radio on. And now let's go check out the amplifier. Alright, so it's on the other side, so... As you can see, green light, that means this works completely. So now... Let's put some music on and see if we can hear a little bit of bass. Alright, I just tested it and it turns out it works. We just got to do a little bit of tuning. So we can't really hear anything right now because of the copyright on YouTube and stuff. But I'll play some non-copyrighted music in a bit. But 
it works and everything. There's no bass right now, but the reason there's no bass is because we have to tune it. So basically what it is is there's a little cap you're capable of doing a little bit of tuning back here. Like I said earlier, there's your gain. So we're gonna put that around the middle. We're gonna put the bass boost around the middle. And the other ones, I don't know what those are, but the bass boost is what makes the speakers bump. And the gain is what's gonna give you a lot more power to the subwoofers, so that way it bumps hard. So let's go ahead and test it out one last time. So now that the subwoofer's installed, we're gonna go ahead and play some music and let's see how it sounds. So we're gonna be playing some non-copyrighted music, obviously, because we don't wanna get a copyright strike, but let's go ahead and play it. So there's the bass knob, ignore the Hot Wheels, but this is the bass knob. Now let's go in the back and hear what it sounds like. This is where the bass line starts to hit. that does not sound half bad for two subwoofers that does not sound half bad and just to clarify that was half volume that was not full volume that was just that half volume on the bass knob so i would play it full volume but i don't want to i don't want to make my neighbors mad or anything so we're just going to play it at half volume but anyways that is how it sounds but yeah that is how you install a subwoofer in your car or truck and over here as you can see this is my next little adventure this is a full a full uh, header and so we're going to be installing this header in the Altima. Now the reason I'm installing it is not because, well, I just want to gain more horsepower. There's another reason why I want to install this particularly. Now the reason I'm installing it is because usually on the stock manifold, from the exhaust manifold, there's a catalytic converter here. And the catalytic converter, if it, the catalyst were to break from inside the catalytic converter, that would suck up into the engine and destroy the engine, which is not good. And I don't want that. So I got this one off Pro Tuning Lab. I'll leave a link in the description down below. It comes with everything. It comes with the gasket, the bolts, the head. It comes with everything. Well, not the head, the exhaust manifold, but it comes with everything. But yeah, that is how you install a subwoofer in your car or truck. So check that out. Those two nice subs, especially with the amplifier in the back. But yeah, that is how you install a subwoofer. So make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, engineers.